today we're driving the 2022 Acura MDX Type S. Now the MDX is one of my favorite SUVs. I love the way it handles. I think it offers great value in the segment. It has a fantastic audio system. It looks good, it drives well. It's kind of the whole package. Does the Type S measure up to its name? That's what we're gonna figure out in this video. I spent all week with this 2022 MDX Type S. Let's walk you around it. We'll talk about what it's been like to live with and then we'll take it for a drive. So first of all, we've got a few improvements to the interior in this Type S variant. We have some open pour wood, some seat piping, nicer materials, uh, a little bit of gloss black here in the center stack, and we get Type S badging on the steering wheel. It's a pretty nice place to be, though that said, this is a pricier option now. It's cresting $70,000 for this MDX Type S, which is not cheap. There's a little bit of a uh, psychological barrier there too once you hit that 70K mark. I don't have a Monroney for this exact car, but pricing should be anywhere between 68 dollars to $73,000, so somewhere in that range. We have a 355 horsepower, three liter turbocharged V6, same engine that's in the TLX Type S. Makes a pretty good noise, um, has a decent amount of grunt. That's made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. And of course, Acura's super handling all wheel drive, which is one of the best all wheel drive systems on the market. Super rear biased, it can torque vector the rear differential to either side. Um, it puts the power down when you need it, and it's pretty fun to drive in this uh, 4,700 pound SUV. All right, let's hop outside, show you what it looks like. We have 21 inch wheels on this MDX Type S and air suspension. So this can raise and lower in sport and sport plus mode. It lowers up to 0.6 inches and in lift mode gives you an extra, I believe 2.2 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty significant. Almost nine inches of ground clearance. Pretty good looking SUV. Quad exhaust tips in the back. Still relatively understated, no crazy spoilers. You get red brake calipers, and besides the bigger wheels, and uh, some little changes here and there. The, uh, the center badge here with the big Acura logo reminds me of the Eye of Sauron. It's uh, pretty menacing looking. The grill design just kind of emanates from the center. Uh, pretty cool integration of all the safety stuff too. Let's take a look in the back seat. Again, some nice looking seats back here. You've got a center armrest cup holder. Uh, you have the ability to, let's see, you can pop this up, turn it into a bench seat. Or you have the option that to completely remove this seat entirely for a couple of captain's chairs, which is pretty neat. Lots of versatility in the back of this MDX. 12 volt power outlet, uh, some more plug outlets, rear climate controls, seat back pockets. Uh, we've done a number of videos on the Type S. It has reasonable amounts of utility and usability. The third row is one of the larger and more accessible third rows in the segment. It's actually pretty usable. I like the packaging back here. You get a nice big panoramic sunroof. There's not as much space in the back seat as I was actually expecting there to be. Seated behind myself at five foot ten. I don't have a ton of legroom, but I have enough as a kind of an average sized adult. I do get window shades. Putting uh, my son's rear facing child seat back here, it was a little bit tight behind my driver's seat, but uh, passenger seat or in the center, you can kind of move it around a little bit better. I do really like the second row seating position. It's comfortable. You do have some uh, backrest adjustments that you can make. You can lean this back pretty far, and this is definitely a stadium seating setup where I can easily see over the front driver's seats. All right, third row and trunk space. You can see we've got a decent amount of third row legroom back there. Easy to raise and lower these seats. All manual controls, which I appreciate. Everything's lightweight. A little more storage underneath here to hide items, which is cool. And it looks like this is where the battery is. Another power outlet back here. Um, you can have little grocery bag hooks here, which are pretty neat. Decent amount of cargo room. 
power lift gate. Very neat. Let's pop the hood and take a look at this 3 liter turbocharged V6. This has a set of Continental cross contact tires in 275 40R21. Apparently they're self-healing, which is a neat feature. Probably a little bit bigger wheel and tire setup than I feel is necessary, but it's still got a decent amount of sidewall. All right, here's a three liter turbocharged V6. 355 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque, rated for 17 miles to the gallon in the city, 21 on the highway. I've been struggling this week in a mix of highway city driving to get 18 miles to the gallon. So fuel economy is not impressive in this MDX Type S, unfortunately. It's heavy, it's all-wheel drive, um, it's turbocharged. You know, Maybe on the highway you'll average about 22, 23 MPG, but that's about all you're gonna get out of this engine. I was kind of hoping by this point, Acura would start to implement some of its hybrid technology and stuff that they were doing with the NSX a few years ago in some of their higher end models, but we haven't really seen that. We're still sticking with some more old school powertrains. All right, let's hop in. We'll show you around the front seat real quick and then we'll take this for a drive. Love these front seats. They massage. They have a ton of adjustability with the bolsters and the bottom piece here, side bolsters, lumbar, really nice, comfortable seat. This has one of my favorite massage functions in this segment. You just press a button right there. You can hold for more adjustment and options. You can choose between wave, shiatsu, step massage, something to keep you awake. And they're nice, firm massaging elements in the seat. They feel authoritative. It's actually kind of nice. My back could use this right now. You can adjust between one of three settings of intensity and of course quickly turn it on and off. It's just right there positioned next to the ventilated and heated seats. Climate controls are all physical, very simple and easy to use. You have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, which is fantastic. A USB-C and type A port right there and more connections down here where you can plug in a USB stick for better audio files, etc. A little bit more storage here. Here's your wireless charging pad, which has barely been working for me this week. You have to get it pretty much dead center and it doesn't necessarily stay there. So I would prefer a cable connection just to keep my phone charged consistently. Uh, I don't necessarily trust this wireless charge pad. There are a few nice storage places though. You can put your phone right here. You've got some big, nice open cup holders. Um, Pretty good sized door pockets too. There's another little place you can put things right here in the grab handle. Um, lots of physical controls in this MDX, which I really like. You've got head up display controls right here with physical buttons. You don't have to go into the infotainment. You really don't have to go into the infotainment for much. Of course, this has this one-to-one -one touch pad, which I actually quite like once you get used to it, but it is pretty tedious and cumbersome to use in Apple CarPlay. I wish I could use this as a touch screen. We have a really nice volume knob and track selection control down here right next to this touchpad. Uh, you've also got an alternative display here to the far right that shows you your navigation, day, time, or music that's playing. Speaking of music that's playing, one of the highlights of the MDX, not just the Type S, is this ELS Studio 3D surround sound system. This is one of the best in-car audio systems I have heard at any price. It's in the top two or top three. It's up there with the Volvo XC90, the Bowers and Wilkins. It has a thousand watts, 25 speakers, and it is absolutely sublime. You play anything in this car from satellite radio to Spotify on CarPlay to really high quality audio files on your little uh, ELS Studio 3D USB stick, and it just blows your mind. It's amazing. So. Really, if you just want a fantastic audio system on wheels, get an Acura MDX, because uh, it's a major selling point uh, for this car if you're an audiophile. Fully digital gauge cluster. We get a number of different drive modes. Comfort, snow, lift. That'll lift the car up a couple inches. 
So we get over eight inches, almost nine inches of ground clearance. Let's actually show you what that looks like. And you have a little height control icon right there that shows you how high the suspension is lifting. It really gets up there. A lot of wheel gap, but a good amount of ground clearance. This isn't necessarily an off-road oriented SUV, as you can see from the tires and wheels. And the all-wheel drive system does okay off-road, but if you need the extra ground clearance, at least you have it with this MDX Type S, which I appreciate. On the other end of the spectrum, we get Sport, and if you hold, you can get a Sport Plus mode, and that'll lower the vehicle. So you can see the air suspension start to come down and we get a much lower ride height. There we go. Front first, then the rear looks a lot more aggressive. Acura has done a ton of work to really perfect the suspension setup. We have adaptive dampers, air springs, and between those two, they have been able to tune them expertly well between different drive modes. Uh, you can also select an individual mode. If you press and hold, you can customize that. You have adjustments for your engine, steering feel, suspension feel, lighting, gauge. You can turn on or off, idle, stop, start. I really like individual mode because I feel like the MDX has over-boosted artificial feeling steering. It's one of my few complaints about this car dynamically. It's just, it's too light. And in individual mode, you can set your steering to sport, which is better. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better. So I've mostly been driving in that. And then comfort suspension feels great. I really like individual mode, but we'll also play around in Sport and Sport Plus some today too. All right, let's take this MDX Type S for a drive and see if the driving experience lives up to the name and the price tag. Nice looking reverse and 360 camera. The parking brake is engaged. All I have to do is tap the throttle and it disengages. Push button gear selector. Kind of weird to get used to at first, but you do acclimate to it. Oh, and then one of my favorite features, actually, for parking and looking around, is you have this little camera button on your right stock. And if you just press it, it'll show you your forward-facing camera, what you're approaching, along with the 360 cam. Press it again, you can see your wheels on both sides. Really nice feature for low-speed driving. If you're not quite sure what's around the vehicle, um, I found it to be very useful this week. All right, so we're starting off, let's just start off in uh, let's start off in comfort mode. Suspension tuning is very nice in comfort mode. It's very soft, very comfortable, as you would expect. With this MDX Type S, there's a little bit more of a difference between the various drive modes and suspension tuning, harshness, comfort. Uh, so that is nice. You do, you do get some more versatility with this car. Uh, some more changes between the drive modes than you would with the normal MDX. Putting us into sport. We have a little bit better response from our paddle shifters, but more engine sound too. Engine is still pretty muted. Honestly, compared to the TLX Type S, I'm a little bit disappointed with the way this sounds. It doesn't sound as good. It's a little bit too quiet and hushed for a Type S product, I feel. That said though, powertrain is pretty responsive once you're going. There is a little bit of throttle delay off the line. It's about a second, which is significant. Uh, if you're trying to make a tight gap in traffic or trying to merge out onto the road, it can be a little bit frustrating to deal with uh, because it takes about a second for the engine and the drivetrain to respond after you've pressed the accelerator pedal. So one of my big complaints on this car, honestly, not something I remember too well about the standard MDX, uh, something I wish Acura would address and hopefully tune out with this car. Put a bunch of miles on this this week and it still seems to be a little bit of a problem. Sport mode, it seems to be a little bit better, a little bit more responsive, but Honestly, you don't really want to be driving around in sport mode in this car too often just because the throttle response is so aggressive and throttle tip-in gives you so much acceleration initially. It's kind of hard to drive the car smoothly in sport mode. It is fun, but not my preferred mode of driving.
driving. Take a look at that super handling all wheel drive system there. Really impressive performance out of a corner. That's where it shines on throttle. Off throttle, we get quite a bit of understeer, but we can balance that out with our right foot. It's quick, but it's not fast. It never really comes on like the TLX Type S does. And honestly, after spending a good amount of time in the TLX Type S, the powertrain in this MDX is just okay. I'm not completely sold on this turbocharged three liter in this MDX. I feel like Acura should have done a little bit more, breathed a little bit more power into this to compensate for the extra weight of this MDX over the TLX. Cruising on the highway, super comfortable, very quiet, even with the panoramic sunroof completely open, very little wind noise, very little road noise. Uh, this is a very nice SUV to cruise in and put some serious miles on. Cruise control, all the switch gear and buttons for this are very intuitive, very easy to use. You can skip five mile an hour increments if you want. You can select lane centering and that seems to work pretty well as long as you keep your hand on the wheel and keep some constant torque on the steering. Uh, it pretty much goes on forever. A really nice system to use on the highway. You can quickly adjust your following distance. All of this is redundantly displayed in your head up display too, which is very nice. This whole Acura uh, driving assistance system works really well. We also get blind spot monitoring, lots of safety features. You have quick access to all of those right here with the button. You can turn them on or off. Uh, blind spot information, road departure, collision mitigation, all very easy to switch up on the fly. immediate difference in suspension stiffness in sport and sport plus modes. I do like the gauge display in sport plus. Shows you your peak boost as well as a G meter. You can see a super handling all wheel drive display too. MDX absolutely rockets out of 90 degree hairpins. Let's put our transmission into sport mode. Keeps the revs up a little bit higher. Like the TLX Type S, this will not hold gears. It will automatically upshift into the next gear at redline, no matter what drive mode you're in. five and a half seconds to 60 miles per hour. And back on the highway. So how can we sum up the MDX Type S? Well, it does the comfort and luxury thing really well. I like the suspension tuning, I like the massaging seats, I like the interior treatments. The engine, the powertrain is honestly a bit of a disappointment to me. I was hoping for more performance, a little bit better soundtrack, and just more Type S flavor from this MDX. Uh, the suspension has a lot more breadth and capability than the standard MDX. It's a little bit more comfortable in comfort mode. It's a little bit stiffer and aggressive in Sport and Sport Plus. You do feel the extra weight from this MDX Type S. It's about another couple hundred pounds heavier than the standard MDX. That's about 4,500 pounds. It's about 4,700 pounds. So for the extra price tag, for the extra $15,000 or so, I'm not really sure this is worth the Type S treatment. I don't know. It, it's in some respects, it's really pretty good value when you compare it to the BMW X5, for example. If you spec'd out an X5 with everything that this MDX has, the X5 would be cresting $80,000, and this is about 10 grand less. 
So in that respect, it's pretty good value. I think as a performance offering, this falls a little bit short of expectations. As an overall package, it's okay. I'm not blown away by the value here. If you want the top dog MDX, it's here for you, but I think better value could be had with just the standard MDX um, Advance or A-Spec. That is a fantastic car. It's really well priced. I actually considered buying one for a little bit and um, I really, really do love what the MDX offers. There's some highlights here though that do really deliver compared to the competition. Super handling all-wheel drive. It's a really, really good all-wheel drive system. If you live in uh, snowy environments or you do any spirited driving on back roads, it's one of the best handling SUVs uh, for spirited driving. It's just really quite fun to drive. It's an impressive system. I'm not sure that this Type S is actually as fun to drive as the standard MDX, just because it feels a little bit heavier and heftier, and the suspension tuning makes up for some of that, but not all of it. It's hard to it's hard to hide some weight sometimes. I feel like this has a little bit more understeer than the standard MDX, a little bit more weight with that three liter turbo up front compared to the standard 3.5. So something to consider there too. I do really like all of the physical controls in this MDX, but again, that's nothing unique to the Type S. I feel like Acura could have improved on some materials in here. They have made a few changes to this interior with the Type S, but again, it's kind of a lot of it goes unnoticed. You get a little bit of open pour wood, you get a little bit of seat piping. The seats are very nice themselves, but there's some other areas where there are quite a few cheap materials. It would be nice to get a slightly nicer headliner. Uh, there are a lot of plastics up here too. And so ultimately, I'm a little bit torn on whether this MDX Type S offers good value for the $70,000 price tag. Uh, one of the most annoying things that I've had to deal with on this car this week is the initial throttle tip-in delay. Uh, I hope that's something that Acura addresses. The only area where that kind of goes away is in sport mode, but like I said at the beginning of the video, you don't want to be driving this thing around in sport mode all the time. The throttle response is just way too immediate and aggressive. So a little bit of a complaint there. Otherwise, dynamically, this is a pretty good car to drive. Steering's a little bit light, but you can tune that out in individual mode, and that is nice to have all of those adjustments in a drive mode selector right there. I would highly recommend the regular MDX. It is one of the best luxury performance SUVs on the market. Uh, it has great packaging, great pricing. You can kind of spec out what you want depending on the different trims. And I think it's as equally, if not <clears throat> more fun to drive than this MDX Type S is. There's that throttle delay again. Let's do a quick sound system test. guys that's going to be it for this video thanks for watching we will see you in the next one let me know if you have any questions in the comments 